Hey. Hey, everyone. Look how many people came back. Yeah, it's a good amount. <laughs> I'm impressed. Yeah, so I guess right now is really just like free work time, anything that you might, if you want to bounce ideas off or if you want to like form teams within people that are interested in the same topic. Um, obviously, Sean and I can't be on any of the teams, but um, anyone else? Yeah. So we have uh, Kate. Kendall, Nancy, and Ellen. Yeah. Are you, um, you guys interested in uh, forming a D4 team and moving forward? Uh, I just, I just, uh, well, I'm interested in the topic. Uh, to be honest, my priority is just getting a team. But uh, if, if I can get, if the team is around this topic, that would be great. Uh, yeah, I was just interested in this topic as well. I thought it was a cool thing to talk about. I wasn't necessarily um, trying to form a team right now. I was just interested in this topic. Yeah, um, I guess if that's the case, we can kind of go back to that worksheet. Um, people would want to do that. Uh, I can pull that up again. If you're just looking to kind of go through that worksheet again, let me share my screen. Yeah, bring up the worksheet again, Brendan, and, and maybe we uh, explore uh, another persona or another stakeholder. What do you guys think? Hello. Hello. Hello, Selma. Topics in you? Um, pardon? Does this topic interest you? Yes. Yay. We got a bunch of people joining our breakout room now. Cool. I'm telling you, you guys should form a D4SD team. No pressure. But Brennan, Brennan, I need to stick away for uh, two minutes. I'll be right back, but continue to facilitate and I'll jump back in. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I guess I can kind of, for those of you that weren't in our breakout session beforehand, um, this is kind of the worksheet that we went through. So I'm sure you guys did worksheets in other rooms, I believe. But for this, we're just kind of looking at how to frame the problem that we're looking at. And so for this, we started with looking at the stakeholders. So step one, um, we wanted to identify the people that are affected by this problem and also those that might be able to help solve the problem. And so for this topic of supporting communities and activating volunteers, um, we started off by listing people that might be affected by or that could help. So hospital staff, medical volunteers, non-medical volunteers, seniors, um, creative people, donors, educators, as well as students of different ages, and then also businesses of different sizes. And, and you can look here, these are the stakeholders, and we've got the assets listed here as well. So what they might need. Um, so for hospital staff, they obviously need a lot of different resources um, that are in shortage right now. And for these students or volunteers, they have the time to help and the capacity to help um, either make things or help deliver resources. And so that's kind of what we're looking at. Students have social media skills that might be able to help activate the community um, on this topic. And other larger corporations, um, people brought up in our discussion that like Amazon has a drone delivery service that could be a way that we could help um, deliver resources without having to have social contact or physical contact between uh, people to people. And so after we listed these stakeholders, this is kind of the process we're going through, we went to looking at the challenges that might affect a specific stakeholder. So for us, uh, we chose looking at middle school and high school students and how they might be able to help with the problem. And so with this, we wanted to pick a stakeholder and look at the challenges that they're facing. And um, later on, we'll pick one of these challenges to help further look into it, further define the problem. And so for these challenges, we noted that middle school and high school students, they need to stay remote, um, like everyone. 
Um, so that's one challenge. And it's difficult to communicate and collaborate with others um, when you're remote. And also parents um, might, might have a say in whether, whether their child can volunteer or not. Um, obviously technology, so limited internet access bandwidth, um, if they have a device to actually use to communicate and help with this issue. Public transportation, uh, or transportation in general, public transportation isn't the safest and not all of them might be able to have a driver's license to, or a car to help per se de deliver something. And then they might have other commitments that they're dealing with. And so of these challenges, we picked the need to stay remote and we moved on to the next step to figure out what is known about the problem. Um, so in this case, with the need to stay remote, um, possible stakeholders that might be involved with middle school and high school students that need to stay remote um, in, in the, the realm of how can we activate the community and activate volunteers to support others. And we're looking at the parents who might limit their child and volunteer efforts, volunteer organizations was a big one. And so something that in their context, there's a lot of policies that are limiting the context. So it might be hard to organize a volunteer effort um, in, in this time. And so, and there's also other things like training requirements someone brought up, um, making sure everyone is trained on the, the specific pr uh, protocols whenever they're performing their volunteer efforts and also language barriers. So whether they might need to know a certain language to communicate with someone that is a recipient. So we're looking at the recipients of the volunteer efforts and um, one of their constraints is that they can't physically interact with the students that might be helping them. And they, they also might not have internet access themselves um, to benefit from these services. So yeah, um, from that, we're, then we moved on to step four. Um, we had identified a stakeholder, we had identified the needs, um, challenges that they're facing and constraints. Um, and then from there, we're looking at what are hunches about this certain challenge topic. So there's a bunch of, uh, for the first, for, uh, to start, we were thinking, someone mentioned that right now, not a lot of students might, they might not want to volunteer at all. And in order to reach them, we might, we might need to find the right person to reach them. And so looking at maybe social media influencers or someone that they're looking to currently, and that might help to give them a sense of, I guess, like empathy and uh, a motivation to help um, volunteer and help out in this time. And so looking at the next steps, uh, what can you do about that hunch to, to, to take that a step further? And so we're looking at, we could like interview students, ask school districts to ask students to really gauge what their involvement level might be like. Um, or if we wanna like look at and we wanna engage with them on social media or see who they're paying attention to and see, who might, be, who might be the right person to make the influence on these people, um, on these students to get involved and volunteer. Um, so pretty much the, the main thing was like, how can we reach these students and encourage them to volunteer? Because they have a lot of assets with them that could help out a lot. Um, and Brandon, if I, may, if I may add to that, we were fortunate to have uh, the wellness superintendent for the San Diego Unified School District mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in our discussion, uh, which, probably is why we kind of, you know, veered towards um, this particular uh, target. And, and she also had a lot of really good answers in terms of hunches and next steps, because I believe uh, one of our hunches was, is, hey, maybe, maybe younger people wouldn't want to volunteer. Um, but Kate, who is the wellness supervisor for the school system, said, oh, no, actually they do. And there are these particular student groups that you could reach out to and then um, someone on the call said, uh, oh yeah, there are different schools have community service clubs and that might be a great group to reach. So what do you wanna do next, Brendan? Um, yeah, so going forward from here, it's really just a free, free work time for people if they want to maybe pick another stakeholder if they want if we want to work through another worksheet like this and go through the steps again maybe for people that haven't that weren't part of the initial breakout room or if you want to discuss other things according to this topic it's really just like time for everyone for all of you guys to ask questions maybe about the topic bounce ideas off of us um yeah so if anyone has like 
preference on what they want to do. Um, there's really not like a set agenda for this time. It's just like we have a time until two o'clock that we can kind of do. It's very flexible in what you want to do. Um, and also, if you feel like you know where you want to go with this and you want to go for a team formation or um, learning more about the discovering process. So I know Jennifer and Eric are teaching um, learning how to, or they're teaching how to gather more evidence. That's another Zoom call that's happening that you can find on the dashboard. And then uh, Stephen Dow is giving a little bit more details on D4SD right now. Um, but yeah, does anyone have any preference on what they want to go over right now? I have a couple of questions. Uh, first, I have a question for Kate and Selma, uh, who just joined this group. And this was a lot of information to take in. Kate and Selma, based on what you heard that we discussed, I'm curious to know your thoughts about you know, um, how we define the problem and the target audience. Um, I'm actually really sorry, but I just realized something. Um, so Helen said, this is the wrong room. And I, I just realized, like, I've been listening to everything, but this is not the transportation uh, uh, room, right? This is not transportation. Uh -huh. This is oh. community. Supporting and activating the community with volunteers. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry, guys. That's OK. Kate, yeah. are you in, Kate, are you in the right room? Does this topic interest you? Yeah, I'm in the right room. Um, I'm a high school student, and I'm also a part of a lot of these clubs or in um, organizations that no way so you're yeah. the target so you could have you could have been in the conversation <laughs> yeah. hey, hey um, can we can we go through this again and pick on Kate and see if we got any of this right move on go ahead you're welcome to all right let's start at the top shall we yeah so uh, so we we identified a bunch of stakeholders including hospital staff, medical and non-medical tiers, the seniors, creative people, donors. Um, but someone said, hey, uh, you know, there's also, and originally we said K through 12 was one deliver, and then college was another. Uh, and then if you could scroll down, please, Brendan. Yeah. We chose K through 12, but then we quickly realized that K through 12, K through 12 probably wasn't the right target. It'd probably be more like middle school or high school. And I guess my first challenge question to you, Kate, is, do you think we could actually go as far down as middle school or do you think it's only high school? What do you think? Um, I'm sure that middle school students definitely would wanna participate, but I feel like high school students are more likely to participate, not only for their own um, like personal agenda, but I think that they probably have more of the um, ability to do it, whether they can drive or whether they have more freedom um, to walk and like gather these materials. I think that parents are probably more trusting of their high school students to be able to go and volunteer without their supervision than the middle school students. Um, plus, I know that there's probably a lot more organizations that these high school students can go through in order to um, get access to the volunteering things and stuff like that. So I feel like even though middle school students definitely may want to participate, it's more likely to be the high school students that are the ones who are taking advantage of this and are more successful in it. I, and I, I think you're right. Nancy and Ellen, you participated in this group. What do you guys think about making this uh, more targeted towards high school and not middle school and high school? Thoughts? I was thinking, um, would it be good to lump together maybe like high school and college students because I know a lot of um, those type of volunteer type organizations overlap between high school and college for example key club in high school becomes circle k or something in different colleges that is interesting thought Nancy are you in college or high school oh I'm graduated from college oh you're a college graduate so you definitely, and, and was this part of your experience that um, high school students and college students have the same uh, accessibility um, to volunteering? Um, I'm sure college students have a lot more independence, but it aligns better than middle and high school, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree that they align better, uh, but I'm definitely going to advocate that high school students is one type of volunteer 
and college student is, I believe college students are different because they're legal adults and I think they have access mm. to different resources that Got high school. Okay. I, think, I think you reach them differently and I think you message them differently. But Ellen, what do you think? Okay. Uh, it probably depends. So, but you know, I have um, a graduate senior in high school, so she's looking at college and high school all at the same time. Sure. And she's going to turn 18 in June, so. Yeah, I got one of those at home, too. <laughs> She's a senior in high school, but she's taking college courses. Yeah, um, I'm actually also a senior in high school and doing the same thing right now. Oh, so you guys, <laughs> might, you guys might be swaying me to think that, obviously, let's remove middle school. I think we all agree that this target probably isn't middle school. But the question is, um, is, is the target high school students and college students? Or is it high school students as one target and college students are another target? And the way I'm thinking about this is in terms of how, how they can get involved and what their challenges would be. Do high school students have different challenges than college students? Because I think they do. Parents being the main, main one. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I guess as the only college um, like current college student here, um, there are differences between the two. Um, and then college students, there, there are definitely a set of challenges that would be different between the two. For example, each high school student, assuming they're still going to class, has the same class time around. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it is in this district because I didn't go to high school here, but it would probably be like 7.30, 2.30, some, somewhere in that range from morning to night but it's not the same for college students. Uh, for example, I don't have class today and I don't have class on Tuesday. Um, right. But I have class on- Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday Thursday. On, on Wednesday, I have class from five to 8 p.m. I have one class from five to 8 p.m. And then on Thursday, I have one class from 3.30 to 6.30 and then Monday I have class from- Okay. So I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. So I, I don't want to push my agenda because I want it to be there, but I am I now I curiously want to another one of these uh, stakeholder sheets, but do it around a college student. Unless you guys want to go someplace else, and I, I'm still of course you know pressuring people to form a team for D4SD <laughs> as an advocate. It's here if we do do that, uh, HS students. What do you think, Brandon? Um. I think we could go ahead and do another worksheet if no one else has anything that they want to discuss. I think that would be a helpful process to kind of go through again. And that way the process is really ingrained in. <clears throat> but that's down for that. Um, who wants to volunteer more, you guys think, the college students or the high school students? and has time. Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, I personally think that a lot of, I can't speak for college students because I know that they also have internships and stuff, but um, I think for high school students, a lot of them are looking to um, participate in volunteering right now because they're thinking about things to put on their college applications or things to put on their community service for clubs like NHS. And then also I know that there's a lot of talk in the forums um, about some of the prompts for next year, talking about what they did during the virus. So I think that a lot of the times, a lot of the time high school students are probably gonna be looking for it. Oh, that's, those are all excellent points. You know, I just realized that um, we were gonna continue to pick on Kate and go through this one before we started the next one. So. Uh, yeah, let's head down the list actually. Yes. Thank you, Brendan. Yeah, I totally forgot about that too. All right, so. You remember. Yeah, well, Kate reminded me. So Kate, uh, so we decided that this is a high school student and these were the challenges that we decided that high school students had. Um, staying permission from parents, restraints, transportation restraints, and other commitments. Is, is there anything that we missed from this list? Um, are we talking about like during this 
period of time or are we talking about other it like in general because I know in general those are definitely restraints but during this period of time that might be very different uh, we're actually thinking about yeah during this time so if you want to correct our list or something because you would be the expert on this um yeah we're looking at in relation to during this time and what how, how it might affect their uh ability to volunteer and activate the community well, just speaking personally, um, I know that the other commitments probably aren't as um, aren't as significant as one may think, because at least for my school in particular, we're getting a lot less work. It's probably taking me like three hours for the entire week for my schoolwork, even though I do go to a good school and I do take challenging classes. Um, all of my extracurriculars have been canceled and my job and my internship. So I, per, like me personally, I don't have many other um, commitments, but that's just one of the things. Other than that, they all look pretty spot on. Uh, I can make a comment. Okay. Other commitments also included like uh, health problems. Okay, okay, yeah, that makes or, sense. Or it'd be stuff like um, maybe they have baby siblings at home they need. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I maybe they have to help out at home. Yeah, I was just thinking like academically and um, extracurricular wise. Cool. Is there anything else you'd add to this list or you think this seems about right? Um, it seems, it seems about right. Thank you. And then Brennan, should we go to step three and share with Kate yeah. what we came up with? Yeah, so we selected the problem to, uh, as the need to stay remote because for a lot of these, um, Sean made a good point about how like a lot of these are binary. So like, a lot of them is like, yes or no, if you have this, then you can volunteer. If you don't, then you can't. And so Need to Stay Remote had a little bit more uh, room to kind of explore and not as binary. And so for this, we went into the uh, stakeholders that might be involved in the Need to Stay Remote and their context and their constraints. So yeah, we didn't go through, through all of them, but we went through parents and how they might be limiting their child and the volunteer efforts, volunteer organizers, and policies that might be limiting uh, gathering, and then also training requirements and language barriers, and also for the recipients of the volunteers, how they can't actually like interact, or they might have other things on their side, such as internet access that might restrict them from benefiting from these volunteer efforts. Hey, Brandon, would you do me a favor, and um, under the recipient? Yeah. Could sure. you please move cannot physically interact with the student in the second column? Okay. Thanks. Yep. And then, yeah, then that one stays there. I know I'm a stickler. Um, Kate, is there any other stakeholders that that we missed in terms uh, of working remotely for high schoolers? I think they, pr you guys pretty much covered them, especially with um, the ones that you didn't even get mentioned, but at least they're like, put down there even though they're not expanded upon okay then step four thank you step four so uh and again we were we were kind of cheating because we had the we had one of the superintendents of the san diego unified school system help us out with this but in terms of hunches um some of the members in the group said oh this age group wouldn't be interested and then the superintendent said, no, that's not true at all. She goes, you just need to find a way of reaching them through social media influencers. And then in terms of next steps, we were talking about, you know, hey, you know what we need to do is we actually need to talk to some students and find out, um, you know, if they would be interested and the best way to engage them. What do you think about our hunches and our next steps? Um, I think the superintendent was right when she said, or the woman from San Diego School Dis or Unified, that we just need to re find the way to reach out through to them. Um, I think that maybe going through the school itself, um, I know a lot of the times that they give updates through email or through class Google Classroom, um, whether it's through their teachers or their counselors. So interviewing school districts, I think is correct. Um, but getting in touch with specific teachers or counselors that have um, kind of a hold on the entire school and have a way of engaging with the entire school that'd be a good one. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Brendan, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't believe it. it's already 1.30. Um, 
Are we supposed to go back now to the main room, or what's the plan? I can't remember. Oh, no, it's actually until 2 o'clock. You can kind of oh. go wherever you want to. Awesome. So. so do we want to... Hi, Crystal, for joining. Hi. Do we want to do another one of these? I thought it'd be fun to do one for the college student, just to kind of compare and contrast college students to high school students. Also, because we have a college student on the call that probably has, you know, and some post-college students that could probably provide some good information. Or do you guys want to go another route? I'm open to anything. Thoughts? Yeah, anyone have any opinions on what we should do next? If not, we can go to another worksheet and kind of do this stakeholder, starting from step two again, we can kind of look at what this would look like for college students. All right, so what do we do? We just do a save as and then uh, fill in the difference, fill in the delta? Uh, yeah, let me pull up another one of these worksheets and I can just fill it in again. Um, here we go. Does anyone else want to explore uh, another type of volunteer other than a college student? Okay. Um, I think that to, I feel like the a lot of the challenges will end up being similar for college students. And okay. Um, do you think we should okay. pick another one then? Who do you recommend? Yeah, I feel I feel like if we were going to do this worksheet again, we should do another one with a more, um, for lack of a better word, unique set of challenges. Just because a lot of the stuff that's written in high school, for especially in a section, I don't have the sheet open, especially in like, what was, what was the section where we listed five things? Section two, I think. Um, yes. Yeah, so we talked about, um, yeah, so, but to your point, it's the higher section that we we're just on, the different types of volunteers we talked about. So we talked about, um, non-medical volunteers with a non-medical background um, volunteers with a medical background uh, we talked about medical workers what else do you think would be we talked about artists that's a crazy group uh yeah because i feel want... like um oh, sorry to interrupt uh, no go ahead Kendall. what do you think i feel like the we should not do medical volunteers just because I think um, just because I feel like they're uh, what they can provide is really uh, obvious for <laughs> uh, for lack of a better word again um, because like they they can just they would be they would help mask or they'd help people who are like sick or they'd help people that aren't sick with COVID that are being that are less prioritized because of um, to, to care for COVID patients, so they would need help as well. So I feel like medical volunteers is a really easy, more like a low hanging fruit. To talk, to right. Tackle. What do you think about like the non medical volunteer, or is there another group that looks interesting? Could we try to brainstorm how we can involve large corporations? Oh, that's a good one. You guys want to do this for large corporations? yeah i think that's a um i think we can do large corporations and like or or, or small and or small large businesses, businesses. Yeah. yeah one one or the other or both i don't know if they should be separated or combined but yeah i i'm having a hard time popping up my window which, which window do i want to go to so i can like scroll up and and see um, Brandon's spreadsheet. Oh, yes. So if you go to the dashboard. Okay, uh, I'm looking you. at that. I'll pull it up here. Um, and then are we kind of taking notes somewhere else? Let's see. That's two questions. Um, you're welcome to take notes somewhere else. We're actually encouraging that you kind of follow along and have your own worksheet. So I noticed that some people had their oh. files going. But yeah, so here. Um, or maybe we could set up our own Slack. Do we have that yet? I don't know if there's a channel set up for this topic, but 
I think um, right now we are working on creating separate channels. We're not sure how it's working right now, but I know Stephen Dow is working on um, creating unique ones for these breakout sessions or these talks that we're having. Cool. But yeah, so if you're, if anyone's wondering, um, you can go to the design jam dashboard. And so in this column F here, there's a link that you can click um, and that will take you to the folder with all of these worksheets. So I've noticed that some other people, um, I think Nancy had one. So I'll oh, have one before. Guy. Yeah. And then the one that I'm on is the one that says, uh, HS oh. student stakeholder. And then I'm starting another one for large corporations. If you wanted to. Go oh, into that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. So if we're ready to dive into the large corporations, or if you want to do st small businesses, um, we can hop into it. I love the small business. All right, small <laughs> business. <laughs> and do we want to do we want to be specific? Um, something that really me, Ellen, that you said was small local businesses. Yeah, um, I'm just thinking about. Places I don't want to go out of business, you know, and and it would probably be people that live in the community um, that run them. Can anybody think of a specific one? Examples, maybe. Well, so uh, what's the first step? The first step is the stakeholder list. Okay. Um, oh, I think who picked... who's a part of the story? Oh, I think we picked this one. Uh, this, I thought we were gonna because we had. The, oh, okay. The you're right. You're right. You're right. Yep. For you're the, right. The step topic. two. Yep. Yeah. You're right. right. But we'll list the stakeholders in step three. Right. But yeah. Cool. So we're talking about uh, what is their challenges and what makes it particularly hard. So if I'm a small business, uh, one thing is, is that I might be required to be closed. Oh, right. <laughs> Yep. That might be a challenge. And so this might affect their capacity to help with the issue. Yes. Doesn't have to be, right? Just because my business is closed doesn't mean yeah. uh, me as the owner couldn't do volunteer work. Mm -hmm. And I could, you know, or even donate or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think the other challenge is, and it's kind of related to the first one, is if I'm closed, uh, I might have a challenge with uh, revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if I don't have revenue, then, you know, I can't donate financially. Because mm -hmm. I have bigger problems, like <laughs> how to pay my rent for my space or the people that work for me. Yeah. Anyone else have any ideas for what some possible challenges might be? Um, I know what? this um, small ice cream shop that's in Berkeley and SF called Milk Bomb. They're like, um, all their like individual em employees are helping with delivering ice cream to people and they have this number that people can text to get on the queue to like tell them what ice cream flavor they want and they'll personally deliver it to you but it seems like a very um slow process so to help them with with revenue we could maybe help them optimize their delivery or their technology they might not know how to you know use it or have access to tech yeah just a reminder we're still in the problem statement diamond not on the solution diamond oh as far as the challenges Yes. Yeah. So we're still in the problem statement, Diamond. So well, what problem do they have? Yes. What problems do they have? Like they might be required to be closed. They are going to have revenue mm -hmm. issues. Um, they might have employee issues, right? Because yes. um, right. Their, their employees work, work. are going to go someplace else because, you know, they can't work there. I think, um, yeah, workforce would be um, another challenge. Yep. Just uh, like for example, we can't have the employees of a restaurant go building ventilators because they don't have the expertise to do that. Or maybe even the money, like the business and the work, the employees themselves wouldn't be able to build ventilators for everyone. Yeah, so 
I know from personal experience, uh, you know, one of my college age students, you know, works at a, or used to work at a yoga studio, but because the yoga studio, which is a small business, um, had to close, um, you know, she's now collecting unemployment. So she's not really a resource to the yoga studio. But I mean, again, that doesn't necessarily stop a business from providing volunteer opportunities for their employees, but it's definitely a challenge. Hmm. What other challenges does a small local business have in terms of their ability to volunteer during this time? Or even not, or even just activate the community in general. Um, kind of like how we were talking about how uh, students have like a social media presence that they might be able to utilize and hope to activate the community around this. But yeah, just wanted to add that in there. So you think that one of the challenges for the small local business is their lack of access to social media? Oh no, I was just saying that it doesn't have to be, the challenges don't have to be about specifically how the, uh, the small local business can volunteer, but also about how they might activate the community. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah. Yeah, so small businesses tend to not have as big of a social media presence. Okay, yeah. Excellent, right, social media presence. And it's not that they're not working on it. How many small businesses do you go to that say, hey, write a review for us or yeah, like us mm -hmm. on, I don't know, whatever you kids can think of. Yeah, I find that a lot of the social media presence that most of these small businesses have are given through them by Yelp. So it's not even voluntary. Uh, a lot of them don't have websites or anything. So if you want to see like, for example, the menu, you would, you know, and you look them up, you'd only see them on Yelp and then you'd have to look at a picture of it. Um, so a lot of them don't have websites or business pages on Facebook or Twitter, et cetera. Well, you could build a whole bit by creating websites and social campaigns for small businesses. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can okay, get I digress. Is there anything two. else under step two <laughs> that we can add? Well, now we can go on to step three and look at this. So we have three problem areas, four problem areas. Four. Yeah. Required to be closed, revenue, workforce, and social media presence. Which one do we want to dive into? I think revenue. Revenue? Yeah. Oh, you chose the hardest one. Okay, let's do it. Because <laughs> they have to stay alive to even do anything, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he chose the hardest one. I like that. It's important. So who else is involved? Their customers? Yeah, customers, uh, employees, uh, uh, their landlord, right? Whoever they have to pay rent to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Laura, and maybe some of these small businesses are founded on loans, so maybe even <laughs> the bank. Yep, the bank. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that one also. Another one might be suppliers. So I guess if they're a restaurant, whoever they're oh yeah buying their materials from. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we can start with customers here. Um, I guess what's, what's the context of their problem? They don't want to leave their house and risk exposing themselves to the virus. Cool. Um, 
any constraints. I guess the constraint is that they're not, they can't always go out to uh, purchase something or utilize the small businesses. Yeah, they may not even have transportation, could be a constraint. What about financial, is that? Oh yeah, that's the other thing, right? They do, they're, they're on a limited budget. Any other constraints or want to add to the context? Um, if not, we can go to employees. All right, I guess we can go to employees for now. Um, what's their context and what do their constraints look like? Well, if they're closed, but we don't know if they're closed. This is just the revenue thing, right? Um, yeah. So, mm -hmm. hmm. well, they probably have less hours. So, yeah. um, I do know that uh, for other folks, that especially that work in the uh, restaurant industry, there's less hours because they're only doing uh, uh, pickup and delivery. Mm -hmm. And also, I guess that even leads to them having less payment, I guess, right? And that might affect them in some way in terms of like the restaurant having their revenue um, because the restaurant's having less revenue, they're getting less payment. Yep. Yep. Less hour means, yep. Less payment. Or, yeah. And then any of their constraints? Well, they have their own responsibilities, their family's home, mm -hmm. they have to take care of, you know, kids, parents. Well, anything to add? The landlord wants their rent. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone else have anything out of this? Um, Kate or Kendall or uh, Nancy? Anyone want to contribute? And they would need, if they see anything that we should add to this or something that doesn't look quite right. Um, nothing. Uh, well, I feel like we're landlord at bank. There's only really one concept <laughs> slash constraint, which is they want their money. <laughs> so. I don't know if there's, I can't think of anything else that they could do other than like, they, they want their money, and then if they don't get their money, they can, well, I, get, I don't know if there are laws in place right now that are protecting against that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Anything for um, suppliers, maybe? I'm thinking that they, I guess their context, I guess they're not getting as much business either um, because obviously the restaurant or for example, the restaurant, they're not needing as many resources as they usually would if they're operating at full capacity. And um, they're also, the suppliers in effect are also suffering from the, the decrease in business. Are, are all suppliers even active right now? 
like uh, I'm not even sure. Yeah, that's a good yeah, question. Yeah. So, so that might be another constraint too. Like maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe some of the suppliers themselves aren't considered to be essential business, and they are also yeah. closed. So maybe mm -hmm. some of the materials that mm. this is made, they can't even get access to because of the suppliers being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it depends on the business. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think you guys know that uh, companies, you know, like Trader Joe's, for example, not sure if they're considered a small business, but um, they're trying to hire more people. And, you know, the suppliers you know, love Trader Joe's because Trader Joe's is buying a ton of stuff. But that's one end of the spectrum. There's other small businesses, you know, like maybe, well, I know our 31 Flavors is open, but um, I think our local pizza place, no, our local pizza place is open too. Uh, but some of it, like our specialty restaurants, like um, like we have a British place and, uh, and a cafe, and because they can only do uh, uh, takeout and they don't do delivery, then those suppliers are probably hurt. I'm rambling. What are you, what are you guys seeing? Um, suppliers have a change in business. Mm -hmm. So they might work with point. different yeah. customers. And again, we are talking in context of small local businesses. Um, I guess with, yeah, we got about 10 minutes left in this. Um, maybe we can go on to step four. Now that we've kind of got all these mapped out a bit. Um, what are some hunches about this problem that people have? Or this, this topic that we've kind of chosen about around small businesses and them getting their revenue um, and how that might affect their capacity to volunteer and activate the community. I think if they had like grants or loans or something, they would probably want to use what they have to keep going. Yeah, along that same lines, if they could deal with their, you know, their local bank to maybe ease payments or something. Kendall, you got any thoughts around hunches? Well, the I, there are a lot of hunches, but I feel like the hunches I'm thinking of, like the stuff that's written down, everything is way out of the scope of possibility for us to do. So I'm trying to think of something that maybe we could do to help them. Well, it's coming to mind right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm already to the next box of next steps. And uh, I'm a big believer in contextual design and contextual theory. I think the only next step would be to, and this is being my bias, but would be to interview some local businesses yep. to validate if if our assumptions are true, our, our hunches are true. Anyways, that's one thing to do. What else could we do to uh, determine if our hunches are correct? Do you think there's any data out there? Well, uh, if we're trying to do, um, if we're trying to find out if our hunches are correct, we could do, um, no competitive analysis isn't the right word, but uh, we could look at examples of what other companies are doing because I know there, there are companies out there that are switching things to volunteer. I don't know, I, I think everything I've heard of so far is large organizations. So I don't know anything in San Diego specifically. No, but, but I think you're absolutely correct. I think there are some small businesses that are, that are doing something and we could definitely look for that. And that made me think of another thing, kind of a yes. Um, and I bet, I don't know, but I bet there's division in like San Diego 
city of San Diego small businesses that actually has some data on this. So I think one of the next we can do is contact the, I'm making this up, San Diego Small Business Bureau. And uh, we could probably get some data there about what businesses are doing. What do you guys think? I think that, I think that's a good way to get information. Just ask the Bureau. Any other thoughts on hunches, steps? I just thought of another group, and that is, uh, I know like USD and USD have uh, like, uh, business groups where they provide like free service to uh, small businesses and startups. So maybe looking at uh, university business community groups might have some data for us to figure out if our hunch is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so I know, yeah, UCSDA does a lot of supporting of startups in particular, and they, I think they also financially support them as well. And so they probably might have some data on that. Um, they have a whole, I can't remember the name of it, but they have a whole little startup group there. Oh yeah, it's called The, the Basement. The, yeah, that's it. USD has a new one called Brain. Mm. You know, if you want to get specific, that also helps out local small yeah. businesses. But I bet both of them would have data, right, about here's who the small businesses are, here's what some of them are doing, here's mm -hmm. our ways that we're helping them. They may even have solutions like, um, they may say things like, oh, we're already helping them find out how to work with their bank to get loans, send loans, or you know, mm -hmm. defer payments, or whatever. Yeah, is there anything else that anyone want to add to this? Um, if not, we're almost at the end of the, the time that we have, but we can also kind of shift towards any like last minute questions. Um, if you have questions about D4SD, um, I can help with that. I've been working on this project since last May. So um, I, I have a lot of, I can answer any questions about maybe the timeline or things that Stephen Dow might have gone over in his session that he was holding uh, in parallel with this that you obviously didn't go to since you're in this session. Um, if you have any questions about the competition or just uh, questions in general that Sean or I might be able to answer for you. Uh, I had a question um, yeah. about the summit. Yes. Um, is that planned to be a all day thing? Um, we're currently trying, I, as of now, no. I don't think it's going to be an all day thing. It, so initially when it was supposed to be in person, it was gonna be an all day event, but there were kind of two parts to it because we wanted to separate um, the, I think it was elementary and middle school students. And so they would be going in the morning and presenting all their stuff. And then some of them could stick around and then wait around and then see after, after lunch would be the second half, which is when the, the high school and the college students would be presenting and also anyone else who uh, was helping out with this and has a project they wanted to present. Um, right now, I'm not sure, we aren't sure how we're gonna make it work now that it's all virtual um, and it'll be streamed. Um, but even if it is, happens to be an all day event, we probably will segment it again. So then um, for you, you would be in the college student category and that would be uh, probably in one half of the day, so yeah. Okay, and if I were to, because my ultimate goal is to join a team and get something good enough to present up there. But would we all have to be present? Because um, based on the website, the summit is in May 15, and I have two finals that day. Ooh. So uh, um, yeah, definitely you don't all need to be present. Um, okay. Yeah, I think uh, if, 
if yours is one of the projects that is being showcased at the summit, um, we would need at least one person to to kind of go over and present your project. But yeah. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Um, if not, hey, hey Brendan. Yeah. So yeah. we'll be doing something like this again uh, next Friday. Yes. So today was um, focusing on uh, identifying the problem and a little bit of early steps into research. And so next week um, we'll be doing this whole thing again, um, intro session with like a short lecture, then going into breakout rooms again and uh, problem specific topics uh, or t t topic specific breakout rooms, and then. We'll kind of go through this whole process again for ideation and so coming up with solutions and then after that next week will be prototyping and that's looking at how you can actually test your test your solution and ideas for that and then after that uh the next week so week four will be connecting with the community and i think how to kind of scale your project i believe yeah so that's a timeline for this so we'll be here back next week uh, talking about ideation strategies. Cool, thank you. But yeah, um, with that, thank you all for coming um, and testing out this this new virtual platform. This is not what we envisioned initially, but I think um, we're glad that you all were here to experience it and kind of test it out because we're also in the process of prototyping all these virtual uh, scenarios for us. So. Yeah, thanks for participating and, and hopefully we'll see you next week. Thanks everyone, Hope thank next you. week. Yeah. Thank you, I'm gonna end the meeting now, but thanks. Thank you, bye.